What's going on guys? I wanted to get in this uh, talk today. Uh, we're day 16 and you know, uh, even though we're in the middle of the month and I know people are, are saying a new year, a uh, new me or a new year, a new you, I wanted to talk to all the licensed beauty and barber professionals really about the upcoming year. You know, this year is full of hair shows, trade shows, um, and in those shows, we're going to learn a lot of things. We're going to learn um, different things about skill sets. We're going to learn about new products. Uh, we're going to meet new people and we're going to get a chance to become better uh, at our craft. I think that that's something that's essential to our growth. I think that th that's something that's essential to us becoming a better person within ourselves, introspectively and, and across the board for our brand. Uh, I think that these things will help us also build partnerships and we get to meet a lot of people but the exposure of it all is second to none. So I definitely congratulate you if you're going to go to a, uh, these shows this year. Uh, get a chance to, to, to check out the big shows. There are a lot of big shows out there. But also, you definitely want to support the smaller shows. Um, I've gone to a lot of the large shows, whether it be in the Cosmoprof, or Premier Orlando, ISE Long Beach, which is coming up. Uh, IBS Las Vegas, IBS New York, uh, CT Barb Expo. Uh, those are really, really big shows, a lot of people, a lot of educators, a lot of big brands. And so uh, I get a chance to to go there because the industry is so big when it comes to hair, skin and nails. And in those in those shows, you get a chance to learn a lot about people, uh, a lot of the uh, influences in the industry and the people that are making a lot of noise. And I think that that's that's imperative to our growth. And we need to, to focus on that. Uh, but what I want to talk about today as we are talking about a new a new year, a new me or a new year, a new you, uh, we really need to think about um, uh, all the things that uh, we're going to do for ourselves. And, and in that, it's, it's going to um, really enhance us in our business mind. And this is things I like to talk about from business behind the chair, things that we don't pretty that we don't sometimes uh, put at the forefront of importance and as I've been in this industry for a quarter of a century more, uh, I have learned that, you know, a lot of the things that are important are from behind the chair. And a lot of business isn't just about the next new tool or the next new product. It's really about you. It's really about what are you doing for your business? What are you doing for your brand? How are you becoming a better person within yourself? And I think some people don't even look at just simple things like getting a business account. So I want to talk about things like that. Uh, and I don't want to keep you too long because I, re I really want to you know push stuff out uh, in the coming few days and even throughout the year, because I know that it's important to me to share this information because there's a lot of people out there that really don't even take this stuff serious. And they call themselves influencers. They call themselves uh, uh, business businessmen and women. And I think that if you're going to be out there and be an influencer and you're just a person that has so many thousands of followers and you can't share this type of information, you know, shame on you because we really need to focus on really helping uh, these licensed beauty and bar professionals become a better person within themselves outside of the skill set, but but also uh, for their well-being and their well-being is is mentally, physically and financially. And we need to focus on those things because we're going to constantly go to shows. We're going to constantly uh, go to educational classes. We're going to constantly do things that are going to better us in our, in, like I said, in our abilities and our skill set to become a better person in what we do. So let's get into it. What I don't want to overlook uh, in, in this new year, like I said before, is well-being. Uh, what is that? Uh, what does that look like? Um, and, and, and what will what 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 I think I'm more. um, um um, uh, apt to talk about is I've spoken about this many times, many times over, and I will constantly speak about it. I will constantly, you know, sing to the roof about this. And, you know, I tell people all the time this year, you need to get insurance, please get insurance. Uh, and the reason that I say that, because you're only, uh, um, uh, uh, ankle bruise or you're only a fracture away from uh, emptying your whole bank account. You have to take this serious because I think so many times we spend our money on unnecessary things and we overlook that time, a time when we are playing basketball or we're playing with our kids or we're, we're, we're turning the wrong way and something just snaps, breaks, 
fractures or even we get an injury. And the next thing we know, we have to empty our bank account just to pay for the doctor or even suffer by not going to the doctor and just suffering with pain that we don't have to. Guys, I tell you, just last year, I had to have minor surgery. If you see right here, right in there is um, a parathyroid. It's behind the thyroid. and It's kind of like a, a bow tie. So if you see the bow tie from each end, if there's a nodule on each end. So it's four. And in there is the nodules, which are considered the parathyroid. They control your calcium intake. And, you know, I was a great bill of health going to the doctor because I, I, I continuously go to the doctor all the time. I, I go um, make sure I got my proper checkups. I check my blood. I do this every year. But I started seeing the doctor started seeing my calcium numbers go up. And it wasn't that uh, it was milk or anything. It has nothing to do with milk or anything like that. I'm not a dairy person. I don't care about milk and ice cream and all those type of things and cheese. I'm pretty much, when it comes to those type of products, I'm pretty much a vegetarian vegan in that because I'm not, I'm lactose intolerant. But uh, for three years, the numbers were, were just going up and up and up. And I was like, man, you know, what is it? And I'm, I'm thinking, okay, should I change my diet? I did my research. And it wasn't a diet change. It's that, it's that calcium going in there and it's helping your bones stay strong. And it's and those numbers have to fit. The numbers are from uh, 8.2 or 8.2 to 9.2 or, or something in those ranges. My numbers exceeded that. And the doctors were really concerned. And I'm thinking, okay, well, they'll go down. Over the course of a couple of years, the numbers kept increasing. And that caused... Um, um, a lot of things that I didn't even have any idea about. So let me tell you what the symptoms are. The symptoms are irritability. The symptoms are sometimes depression. The symptoms are you 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 having pains in in different joints. I was having all of those things. Now life happens. I'm thinking, okay, when I'm going through a certain situation, it's this problem here, and I might be down about that. And I had bones hurting, so I'm thinking, okay, maybe I'm walking too much, or work, or, or riding my bike too much, or even running too much, and that may be the problem. No, that situation was from my parathyroid, was pushing too much calcium into my blood. And that was causing me to have all these symptoms. And the doctor was like, you know, they had a checkup. And the doctor was like, uh, Ty, we, I really want to take you downstairs, remove that parathyroid and uh, get you back to going. Believe it or not, just think about, think about, um, what the size? Think about, um, I don't know. Uh, maybe, goodness, uh, a really, really small pea size of a nodule. Mine was the size of two olives. It totally disrupted the other three nodules and it shut them down because it was just pouring too much calcium. So they had to go in, do surgery, and um, that surgery cost $15,000. Fifteen thousand dollars, I think, close to twenty, with all the uh, other uh, doctor visits. And if I wouldn't have had insurance, if I wouldn't have had insurance, that's twenty thousand out of my pocket that I would have had to pay. All I had to pay was four thousand dollars. Guys, it is very important that you have insurance because I know a lot of people say, "Well, I don't want insurance because it's expensive." Yes, it's expensive if you if you look at it in effect of paying a bill. And, and the fact that you may not need it. But what if you do need it? Just think about 20000 divided by, uh, let's say, you get insurance for um, three years. So, and you say, well, I've never had anything wrong with me, so I don't need the insurance. So you, you do away with it. 20000 divided by 12, 24, 36 months. Uh, you do the math on that. It's worth it. And I think that we need to understand that you know, in order for us to, to, to be comfortable and for us to be, um, um, when I was, feel, feel safe, if something happens to us, if we need to take some days off, that I have insurance to take care of it. And I think that it is important for us to, to, to really invest in our health. And a lot of people don't. I, I will definitely say uh, dental insurance is, is a nicety to have. I, I go to the dentist uh, anywhere from uh, four times a year. I go every quarter. Uh, just to get a cleaning, get maintenance uh, on my mouth. Uh, at one point in time, I really wanted to get a lot of things done and I paid out of pocket because they just don't give you dental insurance. It's, it's, it, it, you can get it, but it's going to take about 
uh, up to 12 months before it can really start taking effect. So I decided to just pay out of pocket and get anything I needed done to my teeth and make sure I didn't have any cavities and just get my mouth at a very, very good state of healthiness. And I think a lot of people don't know too that heart disease comes from your teeth. If you have cavities, you can get heart disease from your teeth. So there's a lot of things that are involved in, in not just uh, uh, your health of your body when it comes to things that you're putting in it, but also from your teeth. So dental insurance is a nice tea. It's not a must have, but it's a nice tea. So if you can get that and if you feel like that's something that you want to have, not just for yourself, but for your kids and for your wife or for a family member, that's a nice tea to have. But definitely, I would definitely encourage you to get uh, 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 health insurance. Uh, another thing that I would encourage you to get is, is life insurance. Guys, I know you're probably saying I'm 25 or I'm young, I'm in the industry, you know, and I know you're probably saying, oh, I don't really feel like I need to have it. Health insurance is really for your loved ones. It's for people. If something happens to you, people are not just dying at at, at, at an old age. People are dying every day uh, from heart attacks in their 30s. They're dying from all different types of cancers. People, I really would encourage you to get health insurance. It's a necessary thing. I think it's good to get it while you're healthy because as you continue to get older and you're not taking care of your body or you're having surgery or the, or because they're doing it through a blood. They're doing it through your blood. And if they detect anything that's going to um, um, jeopardize them giving you insurance, then you're going to get uh, you're going to get denied. So I would always tell people, even if it's just one hundred thousand uh, when you're um, uh, when you first get uh, insurance, because it's nothing. It costs a little bit of nothing to have health insurance. How could I, I would be less than a man to be married, have a son, have a wife and not have a life insurance. If something happened to me, they won't be taken care of. And so I just feel like it's, it's a necessary thing for young people, even if it's just getting 25,000 just to pay for your, for your funeral, if something happened to you, uh, and then increase it as you get older, but just definitely get life insurance because I think it's a necessary, uh, investment for yourself. And it's a necessary investment to take pressure off of other people. If something uh, happens to you, uh, we, I would definitely, uh, hope not nothing happens, but it's something that I feel like I would encourage people to get because it's a definitely necessary thing to do. So we're off of the insurance and let's just kind of move on and just give people an understanding of why, 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 why I think this is so important. You need to have some business accounts. You cannot be a licensed barber, a licensed stylist, and you are just, uh, putting money in, in a savings account or putting money or just keeping money at home or just keeping cash. Guys, you know what? Open up a, open up a, a, a checking account, open up an LLC. And, and, and what does LLC mean? It's an abbreviation. It means limited liability company. And, and the things that I think are beneficial uh, in this is that uh, they say it's relatively new business structures that combine the features of a corporation and a partnership, specifically the tax benefits of partnerships and the liability protections of a corporation. So let's just take this for example. If you're a person, if you if you work in a suite, or if you work at if you work in a shop and you're an independent, and just to say that you cut someone's ear, they're going to sue you, and they're going to take money out of your account. If you're a limited liability, if you have an LLC, there is not going to go to you personally. They're going to sue the business. And so it won't affect you personally, but it, it will. Your business can be your, your business can be you can be protected through your business. So a lot of times people don't really even understand the separation of the two or they misunderstand why they need this. But I really would tell people, even if you just open up a business and you want to be a sole proprietor for a couple of years, there are a lot of differences, different ways you can do that. But if you get you an LLC open your business or SBA, whatever you want to uh, do in business at DBA, doing business as, you know, it's really going to be a benefit to you. So people will take you serious. Uh, uh, clients will take you serious. Future partnerships will take you serious. But most importantly, banks will take you serious. And I think that it's important for us to to not just be call ourselves a business, but actually be a professional, uh, uh, have the professional mindset and then create, and create um, uh, relationships that continues to give us uh, enhancements and acumen into being a better business person. There are so many things that, that come with that. And it's imperative. It's imperative to your growth and it's comparative in, in your continuous learning about being in business. Um, 
I share this all the time, especially when I speak at schools, especially when I speak in classes at, at shows or, or any place like that, because I want people to understand how important that is when it comes to your growth, when it comes to your success, and when it comes to being protected. And, and those things, I mean, uh, are very important. And let's just, let's just be honest. Let me, let me just be honest about that. Another thing that I, I didn't expect to talk about, because I talk about it all the time, but I, I really want to talk about it again briefly, is taxes. Do your taxes and do them right, guys, because let me tell you something. If you're not doing your taxes and you're not doing your part, the IRS is going to catch up with you. You cannot do business. You can't be putting, you can't be having uh, cars and houses and, 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 and really flossing and doing all these things and, and not paying your taxes. Guys, I would always tell people if in this industry, the beauty and barber industry, to pay your taxes quarterly. Uh, if you look behind me, you see ShareShare. So ShareShare is the first mobile app that allows licensed beauty and barber professionals to rent space on demand. What on demand is, is by the day. I know that a lot of people are probably thinking um, uh, are caught up in contracts or caught up in leases. Well, on ShareShare, you go to our app, download, put in your pro build your profile, and you can actually rent a professional space by the day. How, why is that important? Because a lot of people don't work all week. A lot of people can't pay the overhead. A lot of people don't want to deal with the fact that they have to be in one salon. Some people want to be at a salon or a barbershop that's close to the clients, uh, a salon or barbershop that fits their needs. And, and sometimes that's going to be a benefit and a benefactor to them. But only not, not, not only that, but most importantly, we have a tax module uh, a tax module platform on ShareShare. So if you go in, you can actually, uh, when you download the app, you can go in and uh, get in, get inside our tax module and build and get yourself in a position where you can get your taxes done through ShareShare uh, in our platform. And what you get is a tax savings account. Uh, we help you do your taxes and you're able to get your, uh, you're able to do your quarterly taxes. I think that is so important because you need to have people in this industry like myself who really believe and, and understand the responsibilities that come with what we do and, and how we need to do them. So download the share share app and really, really get involved. It's going to cost you about 250 to $350 a year. Uh, oh, not a, well. To after during, for for the tax season to get in a, to get an account and can do your taxes right, and on our tax uh, on ShareShare Share, you can actually uh, become a, 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 in the ShareShare Share app. You can get in there, and all you have to pay is nineteen ninety nine a month, which is actually two forty a year, and you're gonna be good. And we're gonna help you do your taxes, help you file your quarterly taxes, and you're gonna be straight. So you you really need to really get in, understand what we're doing, and and think about your future. And you cannot get around taxes just like you can't get around death. So at the end of the day, you want to make sure you're doing your taxes right because that's so important. Um, not just for when you want to go buy a house, not just when you want to go buy a car, but when you want to refi, when you want to get a, uh, when you want to get a, a, a line of credit. I think that people don't think about that. The banks are going to ask you for your tax paper. They're going to ask you for ask you for some paperwork on for your taxes. And if you don't have it, you're out of luck. So that's just something I think is is very important, and uh, just think about it uh, for your for your best uh, interest and your growth and where you want to take your life. Um, another thing I want to talk about is how people spend money. Let me tell you some guys: do not waste your money on unnecessary things. When I first got in this business, I saved a lot of money, but I spent probably more or just as much as I saved on unnecessary things, things that didn't even matter. And I think the, one of the best decisions I ever made is when I bought my first vehicle uh, uh, in, in two, in, at the age of 25. Believe it or not, guys, I have not owned a new car since I bought that first truck. I bought the Harley-Davidson Edition Ford. And I haven't bought a new car for myself since. I have bought a new car, but it wasn't for me. I bought it for my dad. And I think that what really has made me realize is that those things aren't important. And it kept me from having a car note uh, every two to three years. And it kept me from, from being worried about it. if something broke down, I just fixed it. It, I, it would be better for me to fix something on my vehicle than to go create another car note just because, okay, I, I don't want to go fix this or my car is old. My truck looks just as good today as it did then, regardless of how many new trucks and how many new versions of the truck is out there. I still 
value my truck because I take care of it. And I think sometimes we waste our time trying to impress people that don't even need that, that we don't need to impress. So what I feel like is unnecessary to, to, to um, waste your money on is new cars every two years. Uh, take care of what you got and uh, put that money on something else. Another thing, uh, renting apartments. Uh, don't continuously rent apartments year after year after year and just upgrade and getting a better apartment here and getting a better apartment there. That's money wasted. You can go spend your money on getting a condo, getting your town home, or even getting your home uh, uh, with the backyard. That way you know where you're putting your money in. You're actually living in your money and um, you have investments. And I think that that's, that's very important. I, I, I'm invested in real estate myself. I've been in this industry. I know how important it is. I don't just want to talk I don't just want to talk the talk. I actually walk the walk. And I really believe that uh, when I decided to own a house, uh, um, it, it really made me feel good about you know where I was spending my money and what was important. Not having that car every two to three years and wasting money and actually putting that money into into real estate. So I think that was important. Also, just spending money on just unnecessary things, whether it be clothes, just to impress people. You know, I have nice things. I do have certain high end products. I do have nice shoes. But you know what? I always realized that if I work hard, I can go and do some things for myself to, for, to reward myself. I used to really, really have buyer's remorse way back in the days. And, and my mom helped me get out of that, that situation. And my mom said, uh, Ty, you work hard. If there's something that you want, there's nothing wrong with you going and buying something that's going to make you feel like, you know, you're really putting the hard work and time in to being able to, to get that. So if you are working hard and if you do want to do something good for yourself, don't have buyer's, buyer's remorse. If you're putting in the work to, to own something, whether it be real estate, whether it be something that's necessary, do some little nice things for yourself for yourself a vacation or so anything you want to do i don't care for what it is you can buy you know the next uh high-end uh, uh 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 suit or or wallet or whatever you want to buy if it's if it's uh gonna make you feel good and if it's something that you worked hard for go and splurge you deserve it um what do i feel like you can invest your money in i think a lot of times we don't even realize that the things we use the most uh, are things that have value in them. Um, I think a lot of times no one would have ever thought to invest in Instagram. No one would have ever thought to invest in Facebook back then and they're using it every day. Or or even if it's the, there's a product that you like, go on go on, go in the stock market and see what that what that product what it costs and invest in it. If you use something a lot of you know that other people like using something, that's a stock that you can invest in. I think that we don't even think about it. Uh, we said earlier, real estate is, is really good. Uh, they're not making any more land. Uh, everything is going up uh, as far and not, and not out because land is, is, is locked. And so you want to be able to invest if you can in some in some real estate. I would always tell people to invest in in natural resources, gold, silver, oil, and gas. I think those are good. You know, it depends on where you at and how much you want to invest and how if you want to stand there for the long haul. I think it's it's always good to invest in things that are going to give you some return than rather anything. You can let your money sit in the bank and get one percent interest and in, in be and that's nothing. But if you invest in something, that's going to be beneficial. Uh, for you to have that extra income and that passive income and have that mailbox money that I know that a lot of people like that sometimes when we go into these nice neighborhoods, we wonder why these houses are so big, why they have this, why they have that. It's because they've invested early and they're reaping the fruits of those investments. Uh, and last but not least, hit the drum. The best thing to invest in, the best person to invest in is yourself. Uh, I think one of the things that I did a long time ago is I invested in myself. When I got out of school, I went and worked in a salon. I learned the business. I learned how to sell products. I learned how to, to work with people. I learned how to be a leader. And then after a few years, I decided to open my own salon. I decided to open my own barbershop. And I started to become the leader that I always knew I could be. And I started having people work with me. And I think what's been great about being a business owner is taught me more about myself. And it's helped me understand a lot about people. But not only that, partnerships. You have to invest in yourself and you have to understand that when you invest in yourself, that is the best investment you can do. People value uh, uh, people that really understand the level of risk and the level of acumen when it comes to growth and when it comes to growing something. We always look at these big companies, whether it be Ford, whether it be Tesla, whether it be Facebook, whether it be Instagram, whether it be Oprah Winfrey, and we say, you know what? 
I can't do that. Those people invested in themselves. They thought enough of themselves to put their money where their mouth is and say, you know what? I want to help other people. And other people saw that they wanted to help them and they jumped on that bandwagon. They jumped on that ride and say, you know what? I like what they're giving. I like what they're presenting and I want to invest in them. That investment reaped major fruit for them and they start they, they were able to build a big company and in that big company they built a bigger brand and people follow things that are beneficial to their life their lifestyle and their well-being and and that's one of the things that i want to be i want to be uh, a a great person for the community i want to be a i want to be a salon and a barbershop that was conducive to people uh, liking i wanted to be a culture i wanted i wanted other people to come with like minds to work with me and to work in the same shop with me and i want to i wanted to set a good example as a barber stylist, working around people, letting them know, even though I own this shop, I'm one of you. And I, I want to be as respectful to you as I want you to be to me. And we can build a partnership. I started building partnerships, not just with the people that work there, but with, with distributors who sell products. So I started selling products and I started, you know, just really uh, understanding the level of business that it takes in order to get to the next level. As you look behind me, you see Sheer Sheer. I'm the founder of Sheer Sheer. And one of the reasons I was trying to uh, uh, build a sh build share shares because I knew that there were people out there that weren't able to work in a shop and they couldn't afford to or didn't want to because of the area or because of uh, any situation that could have been. So let's talk about it. It could have been the area they wanted to work in. It could have been the type of shop that it was. It could have been the fact that it, it they didn't want anyone to work there who wasn't working full time. So I knew that people needed to work when and where they wanted to. And certain days they wanted to, and they didn't want anything to hold them back in a contract or a lease. So I was able to give someone uh, uh, um, uh, opportunity from a problem I had myself in my salon. I had empty spaces, and I had a stylist that wanted to come and rent a space for a couple of days, um, uh, uh, for a couple of days a week, and she had tons of clients. Why would I send her home or to go do hair in her house at a hotel or at someone's at one else's house? When those are not the accoutrements that we went to school to train with, we didn't go to school to train under a sink. We didn't or a bathtub faucet. We we needed the lighting. We needed the the the, the station. We needed all those things. So that's why I was able to build a share share, and I was able to help people do work whenever, wherever. Able to give salon and barbershop owners who had empty space, who wasn't making money on that space, the opportunity to make money on that space from a visiting stylist who needed. To work there, and it doesn't have to be uh, from city, from state to state. It could be from city to city, or it can be within that same city. Some people don't want to drive. Some customers don't want to drive an hour to come to you. But I tell you what, if you come closer to them, you may get more business because you came closer to them than them driving across town for you. Because at the end of the day, we're a transient industry. People are always moving around. We need to make ourselves available for our clients if we want to see growth. You cannot be on Instagram. You cannot be on Facebook trying to build clientele and you you cannot build your clientele and be conducive and be uh, um, and you be and they be dependent on you and you're not available for them in the ways that they need you, whether it be distance or whether it be the, 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 the type of salon or barbershop that they want to be in. Because at the end of the day, you can't force people to be what you want them to be. People what want they want what they want. They're paying you their hard earned money. And what you have is a skill set. So if you have the skill set and you know the client wants something that's going to be a better environment for them or a better location, why not make it work for them? That's what Shearshare Share does. We give people the opportunity, stylists and barbers and licensed beauty professionals, the opportunity to work when and wherever they want. And we also give salon, barbershops and spas the opportunity, if they have an empty chair, to list it on our, on our app for free. And then people can uh, uh, find you on, on the app and then they can come and uh, um, book you just like they're booking a hotel. A lot of people, we, we're called Shear Shear, but a lot of people call us Hair B&B. Trust me, it's the future of where the industry is going. I try to tell people, look at what the look at where the industry is going and look at what people are wanting. And it's going to be so much easier for you. Guys, I, I cannot tell you how excited I am for you. Uh, new year, new you, new year, new me. I think that we have to learn that in this in this new stage and age of our lives, we're not getting any younger. And so as, as we get older, we need to take ourselves more, more seriously. So I would definitely encourage you to um, not only take this uh, uh, recording and, and, and utilize it over and over again and just really understand why I'm speaking and why I feel like it's so important and, and really start getting involved 
uh, and, and what it is you need introspectively. So definitely look at getting insurance, get you some uh, accounts that are going to really matter, build partnerships, build relationships. Don't waste your money, guys. Look at doing your taxes right. Get somebody who really can do your taxes right and also get the tax module off share share. We can really help you guys. We know I know what the industry hurts at and I know sometimes people don't really get that. So you have to realize there are people out there that want to represent you like myself and that really understand what you're going through. I really am excited for your future this year. I'm excited for where you're going and for what you're getting ready to do and all the blessings that are coming to you. You deserve them. So have an awesome year. You will see me again. We'll be talking. We're like family. Love you guys. Peace out.